Hello everyone. Um, <laughs> so funny. Okay, so um, tonight I actually spent the last, um, hey Julia, I spent the last hour kind of having like a nauseous dizzy spell, which was super not cool. I thought, oh my God, like out of nowhere did I just come down with something? Um, but thankfully, I drank some water. I think it had a lot to do. Hi, Katerina. <laughs> I think I had a lot to do with, um, I had a really busy day. Did not get my naps in. Um, <laughs> so I think that affected me a bit. And I wasn't eating and drinking at all on time. So I think I finally put my son down and was just like, my body was like in shock. Um, but I'm really happy I did feel better after drinking some water and stuff like that. Hey, Kristen. Um, because I really did um, want to do this live with you guys. Um, as well as I think this... Um, so, sorry. Uh, this live is about some and a lot of the struggles that we face in motherhood. And um, this will definitely be a series because there are a lot of struggles that we all face. Um, they're all very different. And I think that there's a lot of different seasons to motherhood as well that I'm experiencing every time. That's uh, So my husband just came in the house from work and my dog started growling at him. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of different seasons of motherhood. I think at different times we will make and have different struggles. Um, but it's very important and very comforting to feel this solidarity of women to talk about our struggles because then it kind of softens the sound of them, especially when we're going through them and experiencing them. I know for me, that's what really, really helps to know a lot of the times with my mental health and I'm going through struggles, a lot of what I feel is that I'm alone. This is, I'm the only one who's feeling this and um, it can be really, really hard. Uh, motherhood, as we know, is extremely isolating and um, to feel like you're alone and you're struggling on your own um, really makes it 10 times worse. So again, just, um, I love it. Hey, Caroline, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, just to talk about it, open conversations, have solidarity with other women, support other women. Um, I definitely think it's very important and it's special and it's done a lot of really good, a lot of good to um, my experience so far. So I asked you guys about a week ago um, when I told you guys what this live would be about, um, about the struggles that we face in motherhood. Um, I got a lot of different answers. Um, I had almost a thousand comments actually, which is insane. Um, and this is why I think it has to be a long conversation. It has to happen often because if a thousand of you reached out to me through that comments within 24 hours, it, I feel like our struggles are really being downplayed. We are all experiencing them. They're all different. A lot of them are very similar. Um, I will only have an hour to talk and um, communicate back and forth with you guys about this. So I picked a top five that were the most common struggles um, that we face together, um, but there's a lot. So I just wanna go through some of the ones that I think are important that we will tackle on another day and came up a lot as well. Um, so that's sleep, uh, for all family members once baby has come, um, time and energy to do things for yourself. So that self care or that time that you have once, you know, your life and your family is taken care of, a lot of us do struggle in, in that, um, highs and lows and mental loads of motherhood has been affecting a lot of us, um, which is unfortunate, but it's completely understanding and I know why it's so common. Um, memory and feeling unorganized. Um, I definitely feel that. I've been trying to implement some things. Um, a calendar, which has kind of helped when I look at it. Um, 
but yeah, so my memory is like really not so great right now. Um, equal time for all family members is a really big struggle that's been going on. Um, I definitely find that as well. Mental health struggles, uh, feeling of loss of former self, self. <laughs> I talk about this a lot um, because who I am as a person before I was a mother is really important to me. So for the first couple months, I definitely felt like that person was just poof gone. And I had been with that person for almost 30 years now. And it's very traumatic um, being turned to this very complex person all of a sudden to this like single um just being like known as a mother it's, it's really really hard uh, so that i think will be a really great topic but i'm hoping to actually have another blogger join me on that one um being physically ill or have new permanent damage conditions after or during pregnancy so before pregnancy, during and after birth, a lot of you guys actually mentioned you either have conditions, uh, damage or trauma. So I think that's really important to talk about. And I would like to try to get a professional to talk with me about that. I do have a little bit of that going on, um, but I'm not an expert and I'd like to pull in one for that. Um, being on the same page as your partner parenting wise. Um, my husband and I have already hit a couple of these like this. Um, but I know probably for older children or families with multiple children, um, that's definitely a big struggle. Uh, working full time um, plus parenting. Uh, I can only imagine I am not there yet. Um, my son is almost nine months old and I'm going back to work after 18 months. Uh, so I have a little bit of time to enjoy this like honeymoon period ish um before i experience that but i actually have a lot of people who have just gone back to work um so i would like to potentially reach out to them and maybe they can talk to me about their experience um i know they've had struggles and what they're doing to help that uh, that might be pretty beneficial and financial struggles um again i'd like to pull in someone for that conversation um i definitely feel it um a lot uh, because I'm at 18 months I take my salary at 30% um, so it can be a really big hit to rely majorly the, yeah on uh, your partner's income it really changes your life your lifestyle what you're used to and then for me for my challenges financially is that I've never not worked <laughs> essentially I've been making money since I was like 13 years old so to not bring in some sort of a substantial amount of money to do with what I please when I please and have this like insane budget for the first time in my life um, has definitely been a struggle. Um, so again, I think I, I think that's for a different conversation. Um, but again, I picked the five biggest and most common um, struggles out of those a thousand comments and then i re-polled you guys um i was really curious to see why and where the struggles are coming from and then also um i asked you guys at the end where you guys think the struggles are coming from and i think there's a lot of really great things because you guys really dug down deep about what your struggles are and um i think they're really important to touch on um, again through another live. So I think maybe we can just dive on into this. I've had a couple days, especially since the polls um, that I did to think about and really reflect where I fit into these struggles and um, why they're there, why they're present, what I can do or what potentially you guys could do to help this. Um, but we'll just get to the first one and that's making friends as a new mom. So, you know, I have had a really good group of grounded friends um, for a long time. And some of them now are pregnant or some of them have just given birth um, and some of them are not. I kind of have a little mixture of stuff going on. But here's the thing, unless your friend is um, in the exact same situation as you, or even has a child the exact same age, 
you're not really seeing those people like at all. Um, and it can be really, really depressing. It can be a really big part of you that seems lost and is lost. Not forever, but for the time being. Um, and you're making this really big shift and change. And it's like, what the hell? Like, I have no friends. You know, the, the friends that don't have any kids are inviting you to zero things anymore. Um, or have completely stopped talking to you and communicating with you. Um, or it's here or there, but like plans never happen. Um, and then the ones that have babies, but they're different ages, naps can be a really big struggle of getting together. Um, so again, if, unless you guys had babies pretty much the exact same age after the newborn stage, your naps won't coincide and you can't really see each other. Um, so yeah, your old friends or your, your group of friends kind of for the time being are a bit more distant. So you're left with your family, um, which is amazing because for me, I'm very, very close with my family. But again, I'm not seeing them as much. Um, and then you're kind of left with this empty space to occupy your Monday to Fridays with, with a newborn baby. Um, or if you have multiple children or this or that, and it can get very, very lonely. This was the making friends as a new mom was the most common answer from you guys when I asked what your motherhood struggles are. And so what my poll asked was um, if you would prefer to meet friends or other mothers to be friends with um, in person or online. Um, almost 300 of you voted that you'd rather meet in person. Um, and then like around like 50, 60 of you um, said online. So for me personally, um, I've found it much easier to meet people and connect with people online. Um, I have this wonderful platform now uh, of you guys joining in right now and talking with me um, and tuning in. Um, but even just from a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of what my blog is and where it's been the most successful has been through my stories and um, direct messages from my stories. So a lot of the time, I'm having these wonderful in-depth conversations with you guys instantly when I'm posting something. <laughs> Sarah's like, yes, we met online, woot! And now we're real life friends. <laughs> um, but yeah, so why I say online is probably really important is because with the struggles of meeting in person, it can be really hard, it can be expensive. Um, going to events or going to play groups or going to this or going to that, it can be really intimidating, it can be expensive. Um, sometimes it's really hard to get out of the house with naps to make times, um, or you're just exhausted and tired. So for the majority of the time, you are at home and you're with internet and you're with your baby. I definitely recommend follow mom bloggers. We are here to talk and communicate and this is like what we thrive on. We are usually personalities who enjoy writing about our experiences. We enjoy sharing pretty much everything about our lives. Um, I know I speak for myself, I have absolutely no filter. There is nothing that's off limits for me and um, I'm always down to talk. So for me, that's my personality, reach out. Um, so yeah, find mom bloggers. We are there because we want to communicate, we want to talk, and we want to talk about lots of things pertaining to motherhood. Um, and another thing, when I'm posting these things in my everyday, it can be something so mundane or like casual or, just like an everyday thing that I'm doing with Amadeo. And instantly I'll have, you know, sometimes 20 people say, oh my God, he's so cute. Like, how are you doing today? Blah, blah, blah. And then there's this instant connection. So it's really this blog and like connecting with like-minded, kind-hearted, amazing, fantastic women um, is a lot easier to do online as a new mother than in person. So, 
as much as you guys really voted for you'd prefer to make friends in person, I definitely encourage to fill that void of a lot of the time not being able to do that because there's such like barriers in your way, go more the online for now. Um, and again, follow these mom bloggers. I am always recommending people who, you know, I follow and I love like-minded people, follow these people, communicate with them, talk to them, um, about anything and everything. And then I am trying to figure out, and I've been thinking and like not really sleeping thinking about this, how mothers can meet up and meet in person. Um, I think now I'm going to start trying to do meetups like in parks and stuff that it's nice. So just throwing it out there on social media, you know, um, let me know if you live around this area and you'd like to meet up around this time, message me and I'll tell you which park we're going to be at, you know, things like that. Um, but that doesn't reach a lot of you. A lot of us live in different countries, different states and things like that. And, uh, again, I struggle very much with going to these mommy and me groups. Um, from my experience, I've found that they're very clicky. Um, it's very funny. We actually spent some time at, uh, like a play place, gym place, a couple of us mom bloggers last week. And Sarah, who's actually talking about how we met online, her and I were just having fun with our kids and being silly and we don't care what people think. And there was, you know, a group of four women who were giving us the dirtiest looks. Like they wouldn't touch us with like a 10 foot pole. Like what the F are we doing? And it's that feeling, unfortunately, that I get a lot. It's like this weird high school, like, click business. And I am, like, zero time or patience for that. Um, so, again, I think there needs to be different ways to reach people. Um, different opportunities where it's, like, very much stated. Um, let's meet up <laughs> and, like, not be clicky and, like, be wonderful, supportive women. But... I'm gonna let you know if I can figure out other ways of doing that because um, the other ones are hard. Okay, Kristen said, I think meeting in person not only gives us the adult interaction we need, but to also get our babies to socialize, but it's just so hard to do. Ah, yes. Hi, Irene, hola. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, I, I completely agree with you. Like. It's amazing to see my son interact with other babies um, and see him have like that kind of social aspect. And it is good for me too, but yeah, it's extremely hard to get in that space. And I don't know if anyone before we move on to number two has any other tips or tricks or things that have really worked for you guys on how you've met friends and made friends in real life. Um, just drop it down now or even DM me later, direct message me later. And um, I would love to try to like put something into place for that. But I don't have very many suggestions. Again, out of, you know, the over 300 that said in person and the way less that said online, I'm pushing you guys to do a lot more online. I think it will it will fulfill a lot of what's missing um, like it has for me. Oh, Beyond Milestone says, playgroup saved my life. Well, I'm happy you had a great experience. That's amazing. And I, I have met people who really do enjoy it. Um, okay, so if there's nothing else, I am going to do not heat that up. I'm telling my husband came in late. He's not allowed to use the microwave when I'm living with you guys. Okay, so number two. Um, and this is one that I thought a lot about and I'd really like to have a back and forth conversation and this is about housework as a mom on mat leave or as a stay at home mom. Um, this again was like a huge, huge, huge response. I almost had like, like an insane amount of comments about this and I've definitely felt it and through you guys communicating to the, this to me, I've really thought about like, why is this such an issue? Why is this such a problem? Um, and so I wanna tell you my thoughts. Thomas, oh 
my God, my husband's the worst. He's like a child. Okay, he's leaving. <laughs> okay, so housework as a mom. So a lot of you guys, I pulled you afterwards and I asked if as um, a stay-at-home mom or um, a mom on mat leave, if you feel like you're getting less housework done um, or if it's like about the same, you're just struggling with how you're fitting it in. Um, and a ton of you said less, like you're just getting less amount done. You have no time to do it. You can't take care of your baby. You can't do this. Sarah's laughing at Thomas and she knows where he's going to his dungeon right now. My God, working season sucks. Um, okay. So yeah, what I was thinking about was I really started feeling this way as well. I felt like you know, dishes were piling up and I couldn't vacuum. I couldn't, you know, dust. I couldn't do the laundry. And it's like, why can't I do this? Like I have a child and there's so much stuff going on and whatever. But what I realized is I've actually physically, and I'm sure most of you guys have too, even though it doesn't feel like this, have been doing more in my home than I was pre Amadeo and I was working. And I want to tell you why I realized this. Now I'm at home up physically in my home doing things, whatever it may be, whether it's with Amadeo, doing an activity, um, doing the dishes, preparing, what, whatever I'm doing, laundry, whatever. I am up physically in my home working. Um, I don't want no, I'm working from whenever he wakes up around like 6 37 um until he goes to bed my shift when i'm working in daycare is 7 30 in the morning till 6. i get an hour and a half paid break but i am physically away from my house for the exact same amount of time so when i was working i really tried hard to think about this because i'm like what did my house look like before and I realized that it was a struggle before as well, but a lot other than cooking um, my meal, putting that away, which I usually didn't do, my husband did. Um, I like to cook and he'll clean if I've done that. Other than that little simple thing, nothing else was getting done. Laundry, sometimes we would have to do every, once every two weeks or once or like a bunch of loads once a month when we would get to it. Um, the actual dusting and vacuuming sometimes would be every two weeks and we would change the filter to our furnace more often. But by the time the weekend's there and we're able to do stuff, we would like to connect and have a relationship. We would like to see friends and family. We would like to go do groceries and get everything we need for the week. Without baby, there was still life. And my house still had a shitload of stuff to do. I think more, again, because I was at home and I was working. I, I, sorry, I wasn't at home and I was physically away from my home so I couldn't do anything. I think society, our own pressures, maybe family members. I know my grandmother is like old school Italian and like, put her children in drawers, <laughs> not to be neglectful, but she had to fucking vacuum. So the kids were safe in the drawer, not closed, <laughs> but that was like their playpen, um, you know, 70 years ago. So this is the thing. I started really trying to value myself as a job. This is a job. I am raising my son. The government is paying me maternity leave to be home with my son and raise him. Give him what he needs. The times that he sleeps, which isn't all the time. Daytime is crazy. There's a lot of stuff going on. I am taking that fucking break. I am not, I'm no longer doing the laundry. I am no longer doing the dishes or doing the bottles during that time. I'm not doing it. I fucking refuse now. When he is sleeping, I am having my paid break. I'm taking time for me. On weekends, again, because now it's family time, trying to see friends, trying to do all the housework, trying to do this, trying to do that. 
Um, I've decided that my husband and I are going to be more of a team in it and tackling it. Um, but I, I need to get this. And I think we as women need to get this out of our head that all of the sudden, because we're physically in our house, we need to be cleaning it all the time and it needs to be perfect all the time. Like, that's not what we're here to do. That's not what the government is paying us to do. That is not what maternity leave is all about. And that's not what you were doing before when you were working. So it shouldn't be that way now. So anyway, that was my like aha moment. I hope if that can be like a little mental shift with you as well, that would be fantastic. Because I really realized this, that F this, I am not... Um, on maternity leave to clean my house and do the laundry and do this, fuck that. I am going back to doing it on weekends and sharing it with my husband and we will take turns with our son and we will make it work. If laundry gets done once a month, it's gonna do that because that's what we did before our child was born. It's like we've added this person with lots of other shit to do and we've expected that we should be doing more for some reason. I think we just forget about the situation we used to be pre-baby. And we put all these unrealistic expectations on ourselves, and there comes all the struggles. It's so crazy. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I think this is gonna be a really good conversation, maybe in stories and like we can talk about it. Um, I'm, I'll share stories now and like figure out a hashtag like, you know, boycotting cleaning while I'm on mat leave. This is not my job. Look what I'm doing with my son. This is my job. I think I'm going to do something like that. Or like Erica from Mom Break does. Like have a mom break. Mom break of the day. Hashtag mom break OTD. It's so important. Why the F don't we get a break? We've worked the longest and most complicated hours of our life and our careers. Like we can have a pee and watch a show or do whatever we want to do. It's so crazy. Okay, so number three is a doozy for me at the moment and I pulled this kind of sh like catering it towards me I guess and there's not very many who are in my boat um and it's really interesting from the other side anyway so number three and one of the most popular things was and our struggles as new mothers in motherhood is intimacy sex with our partners after baby, after children. Um, I've had a lot of women reach out to me and be like, don't feel bad, my children are four and six and we have sex like once a year uh, for this reason and this reason and this reason. I don't know if my husband's watching downstairs, but he's probably like, delete this blog, don't talk to any of these women, they're witches. We are having sex more than once a year till my child is six and four and whatever. But I think this is a really important conversation and it can be very uncomfortable and really taboo to talk about, but like I'm all for conversations like that. Um, so here we are. A lot of the other factors that you guys said, other than it being painful, which again, wasn't very many of you and where I kind of am shifted more towards, um, is uh, just being really fucking tired <laughs> and not wanting to do anything intimate or physical um no time so again we're trying to fit so much more in our day i love it hi melissa thank you <laughs> sorry sometimes i get distracted um and i want to like address your comments because they're so fun um yeah so no time we're adding like a lot of other stuff onto our day onto our you know, to-do list and by the time we're done and it's 10 or 11 o'clock, we're going upstairs to bed and like, there's no more time, sorry. No time for sex. <laughs> um, just not wanting to. I have a lot of these moments. There are things that I can justify of why I'm not doing certain things like working out or eating healthy or whatever. There are things that like go with that, but a lot of it is just like, I just don't fucking want to. And like, that's kind of like my attitude a lot of the time too. Like, hey, you want to make out and touch and have sex? Not really. I don't fucking want to. I love you though. But like, don't want to touch your penis. 
Um, and then painful, uh, which is like more my thing. Um, a lot of the time when we birth, <laughs> Vicky, a lot of our time when we birth a child, whether it's through cesarean, um, or we are, um, sorry, pushing it out of our hoo-ha. I just, I can't even think of what that's called. And that's what I did. Um, anyway, uh, there's trauma to our body and sometimes the trauma can leave a lot of complications afterwards or a lot of things that are painful and uncomfortable for me, which I just figured out a month ago, um, after complaining since I was four months postpartum, um, I was just feeling so much pain, uh, as if like I had like my stitches back and they were so much pressure and painful and I would go to the bathroom and it would hurt. Like, again, if you've had a vag vaginal birth, there we go. Um, if you've experienced that sometimes when you're sitting down, like, and you're healing from stitches, it's that pressure. Anyway, um, I finally got my doctor and health professionals to take myself seriously after advocating about this for so long. Um, and they realized that my scar tissue from my stitches were actually like mm, this long and this thick, like insane. So no wonder it was so painful. So a lot of the time I'm just, I don't want to be intimate because it hurts. It's not enjoyable. Um, I have a monthly newsletter. If you guys um, haven't already sent me your emails and haven't subscribed to it, I definitely recommend it. Um, it's awesome. But in this newsletter, I've said what me and my partner are working on to try to make this a bit better because this is all fun and games until it's not anymore. And it can be a really big strain and stress on a marriage. Um, I think feminism and when people think about men and women, it gets a little bit construed um, because we get so busy defending on something that we forget the real point. My husband hasn't physically gone through any trauma. You know, he, he didn't carry our child for nine months. He did not have any physical trauma or scar tissue damage or this or that. Um, at the moment, he is not with our child every day and feeling those exhausting pressures of parenthood day in and day out. He goes, okay, he works with other, you know, kind of children sometimes, he says, but, but it's different. And I have to be aware and and be cognizant and be compassionate towards my husband who I love more than anything in the world because he hasn't experienced any of that. His libido, his everything towards me hasn't changed at all. It doesn't hurt him to be physical with me. Nothing has changed mentally, hormonally with him because he didn't have those changes. So you know, through therapy, through trying to do other things, I'm going to be going to pelvic floor, going to physio, trying to get my body back on track. Um, and again, in my newsletter, I have a lot of what we are doing, but I think it's very important as we struggle with this to work with our partners, to find a better common understanding, a better open communication about this. I know sometimes it can be really awkward or uncomfortable to talk you know, to other women or to your partners about how you're feeling, you know, it can be really hard. And me and my husband have had some really hard conversations about this as well. You know, a lot of the time, um, he feels really rejected by me. He feels like I'm not attracted to him. And it's just like, no, it's, I'm tired. There's no time. I just don't fucking want to touch your penis. And it's fucking painful. You know, like these are our lists. It has nothing to do with how attracted we are to you. Um, you know, how much we love you, how much we want to be with you, like intimate wise. Um, but yeah, it's just, we have experienced two different things over the last nine months and then birthing our child and then postpartum and everything. And I think it's a lot to do with communication. Also talk to your friends, talk to people who have been in this situation, who have birthed, 
um, their own children or who are going through parenthood right now and ask them, hey, are you fucking struggling with intimacy with your partner? Because I don't want to fucking have sex. I don't want to do this. I don't want to. This is what I'm experiencing when we do do it. This is fucking. I know this is a graphic conversation, but can we go there? Great. Most of the time, <laughs> um, women will go there because after we've given birth and like experienced all of this on the table and we're naked and there's bodily fluids everywhere and a baby's coming out of us, there's not much that we won't talk about um, with our close friends and with other women. I'm someone, if you wanna talk to, no problem. But yeah, again, I think it's a lot about solidarity. It's about knowing that you're not alone. So many couples go through this and it's hard on your marriage is a big struggle. And again, communication and trying to work towards getting back to where you were sometimes pre-pregnancy and sometimes pre-baby. I was never like, I had like the worst pregnancy ever. It was awful, full of complications. Um, like I was not wanting to have sex even when I was pregnant. Yeah, so um, one of my followers just said, um, a psychiatrist has also stated that for women, we are not programmed to have sex. So we need to make it a habit to get back into wanting it. But yay, after birth, it's owie and you're exhausted. It's true. Like, I don't know. It's hard. Anyway, that was like a really, really popular thing. And it's something that I can really relate to in this season of parenthood and this season postpartum. Um, so yeah, if you don't, if I don't have your emails, send them to me, um, in the messages because tomorrow the newsletter goes out to May 1st. Um, and I would love to share with you guys what me and my husband are doing. It's really simple things to try to work on this. Um, and there's no shame in that. Okay. So we have about 20 minutes and we have two really good things, um, left that were the most popular. Um, number four is mom guilt. Are you getting it from strangers or family? And this poll, um, was like 500 people voted. Um, and it was pretty much 50, 50. It was almost 250, 250, like give or take a little bit. Um, which is super crazy to me. And then when I was thinking about it, the mom guilt that I have felt has definitely been probably equal from both. It's been from family members and it has been um, from strangers as well. I think we experience guilt on accident um, or people put guilt on us not knowing because I am the type of person, sometimes not in the moment, um, but sometimes I'll go back to it or in the moment, um, I confront something that's made me upset or made me feel like not so great. And um, in those moments, whether it's been at the time or I've reflected a bit and come back to it and had conversations with people about how things have affected me, um, a lot of the time people just like don't mean to do it. They have no intentions of making us feel like shit or guilty or shitty parents. Um, and, and sometimes they don't even realize what or how they say it. Um, I actually was at a play date today with my friend, Julia. She is, um, on here watching, uh, she's a nurse and she was saying the last trip she went to the grocery store, you know, a, a woman in her like mid fifties, sixties, maybe went up to her and, and, and her baby and her husband. And the first thing that she said to her was, are you breastfeeding? I was like, what the fuck? And I received a lot of this, like a ton of this. So my friend who's a nurse is breastfeeding, but she experiences through her job working in that literal area in um, medicine with moms and babies, the struggle that some women go through and the reasoning why some people don't breastfeed. And again, like, her being a nurse and stuff, she, she just said, you know, very politely, um, back to this woman, you know, 
I don't think you meant to like say this in this way, but you should, I'm a nurse and I've, I've seen a lot of women struggle with it and be in tears with me. You, you should be really careful about who you ask that to. Like you should really know the background of the person before you start having these really controversial <laughs> discussions. And I think that's a really, really great point, but it's also a really great point in, because I find I work myself up. Um, I remember there was this neighbor who I've never spoken to or met like in the year and a half we've lived here, this way older woman. And I was, you know, walking with my son for the first time. And that was again, the first thing that she said and me being honest and everything. I said, no, like he, he wouldn't latch and I give him formula. And the response was fucking nasty. <laughs> Again, I don't think she was trying to be malicious, but like, ooh, there was a lot of guilt put on there. Um, yeah, so I think a lot of the time I like had myself worked up. I wrote a fucking blog post about this, which has never been published and I will not publish it because I read back and I'm like, okay, this affected me so much more than it should have. And this is the thing, whether it's your family, whether it's strangers, I think a lot of the guilt that we feel ends up being our own shit. And um, I think what can really help this issue and this struggle in motherhood, and it's been kind of a saving grace for me, sometimes not in the moment because it can be really difficult, but after when I reflect on it, is that... Um, they, they're just not meaning to be shitty. Some of them are, some of them are narcissistic assholes who are trying to be shitty to you, but not all of them. So just to like, let people do their shit, don't react to it as much, just to like, try to let it just go off our shoulders a bit more and just know that we're doing a really fucking fantastic job. And that leads us to number five. Um, we have about 15 minutes and I think this will take up most of it. So a lot of issues, and I feel this a lot, is um, pressure to be perf like the perfect mom, the super mom, the mom who does it all, who can balance it all and like whatever. Um, first of all, it's like we all know, even like saying this, it sounds so ridiculous. But in the moment, like, of course it's a struggle. We cannot help but compare ourselves, especially um, if it's your first time or you're in a different season when you have multiple children and this and that. You really second guess your shit. And you look around and you're like, what the hell? Like, I should be doing this. 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 But what we forget is those mothers aren't doing then ABC. They're just doing D and they're doing D really well, but you're doing A really well and not B, C, D. And, and so it's just like, it's very comparative, um, but we compare in the wrong ways. Um, so my poll was, if you do feel this pressure, because so many of us do to, to be the perfect mom, where is that coming from? Is it coming from social media um, or societal pressures? And this was another poll that was almost exactly 50-50. 50-50 um, social media and 50-50 societal pressures. Um, this was another one where I was like, I thought for sure I had no pressures from social media because I tend not to really give a shit or I know things are so, can be so fake. <laughs> um, but and then I was thinking and I was like looking through some like people's shit and I'm like, oh, like I'm judging myself and like my capacity of being a really great mother, um, a great wife, a great whatever. And it was like social media accounts. So like, I think, mm, yeah, I have that too. Um, so I just wanted to share something with you guys, as I'm saying a lot of the time, like this is all bullshit. My outlet is not. Um, 
mainly because I just don't have the time or knowledge to do that. Like, I just have no idea. I can like, it, it's taken me forever to figure out this live and I'm hoping I'll figure out how to save it at the end of this because I haven't been able to successfully do it. And at the beginning of the lives, I'm like, yeah, it'll be saved and posted here for you to watch later. But then I like fuck up and they're gone forever. So you won't be watching any of the previous ones except one. Um, anyway, so I just don't have the know or like how to, I don't have the time and I don't really care to be anything but me because I'm ridiculous. And like, if you don't like it, then whatever, like don't follow me. But there was this amazing, I just watched actually yesterday and I'm going to try to find the link and post it for you guys. There was this amazing Australian blogger and she wanted to expose how with a little know-how and like technology and like Photoshop and stuff, how you can really make something appear like it's not on social media. So what she ended up doing was saying that she was going to Coachella and um, she posted like the whole week of pictures in different places in Coachella and this and that and everything. And then after it was finished, um, she showed in detail through video how she never actually left Australia. She was not in Coachella and how exactly she did it. When I saw these pictures and everything she posted on social media and her stories and everything, I was like, this is fake that it was fake. Like this is real. She was there obviously. And then she shows exactly in the video how it's done. And I'm like, whoa. So again, if people know that they're able to manipulate things to make it look a certain way. Um, I find the mom blogging universe can either be very much like me. Um, <laughs> someone's, someone's saying there's a website that can do this for me. Maybe I should pay for that. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, so there's, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought because I have mom brain. And that's real. Um, yeah, so in the mom blogger universe, which is like you guys are here interacting with me, I assume that's where you're really looking and like probably passing judgment on other moms who look perfect, who have all their kids in these like beautiful, natural nude clothes and this and that. And there's also mom bloggers who do do that and then say that this is not their real life that they essentially bribe their kids to do this because this is their job. Um, they're making all of their salary on this business um, and their kids are wearing, you know, Paw Patrol out of these pictures. And like some are very honest about that and some are like really not. Some are like, this is my life, it's so beautiful. Um, but again, when you're seeing things posted, even with me, like, We've had a lot of talks about this. Um, even I did with Erica from Mom Break on our live together. You know, sometimes people will be like, oh, you're doing all these like amazing things with your son, like about education and like setting up shit and whatever. And I always try to say like, and like we talked really in depth about that on there and there will be a blog post coming out about that. Even with me, like that's because that's my interest it doesn't take time or effort. I have the education behind that. Like, and again, you're doing the exact same shit as me and you're going to get the same result just doing it different. If you also enjoy it, follow along. I'll try to make things as simple and easy as possible and explain exactly why I'm doing it because that's important to me and it's important to some of you. But if it's not, fucking don't judge yourself about my shit because, you know, I have a lot of other shit that you like would be like, oh yeah, better off without that. But we all have that. So if you were the 50% who voted social media, which again, I really look deep in myself and I do it sometimes, um, stop. Like we need to figure out how to stop this and really just have the mentality of, this is about connection, it's about art, it's about an outlet, it's about um, literacy, it's about um, companies, working with people like it's advertisement go somewhere that tells you to not judge your life and every aspect about you from that 
societal pressures, which is like where my 90% comes from. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I, my son was like doing weird shit, but he's still sleeping. I got distracted. Um, societal pressures to be the perfect mom and to do everything. Um, I think there's a lot of pressure and it comes from a different time. And what I mean by that is a lot of what society expects mothers to do now, they're not, it's not accounting for what is this time like what generation we're at right now, where we are. So it's kept everything from the past generations of what we should be doing for our children and this and that, but then disregarding everything else that's out there. You know, um, us as parents and moms uh, and dads and everything, we're supposed to be raising kind human beings who are empathetic, who can, you know, self-regulate their emotions, who are also really smart, uh, who are well-rounded, who are athletic, who are doing this. You're supposed to be a mom to cook and clean your house all the time and, and still raise these kids like this, but still have a perfect house and still go to work full time, but still do this and still do that. And, and I think the message gets clumped together and pushed out. And that's where we feel so shitty is because the message is put together and so the expectation is that every single one of us should be able to balance all of that perfectly and that's like the biggest pile of shit when you think about it like ever and it's like the biggest scam because there are so many other things to consider and that have gone towards what we are supposed to be doing that it doesn't match up with the expectations and what we're actually able to do in a 24 hour span of life. So again, I have in the monthly newsletter because this was something that I really care about. I've been saying a lot of mantras um, to myself and the best is a couple years ago before I was diagnosed with PTSD, um, I was like, if someone was like, do your mantras and meditate, I'd be like, I go F you. Like, I'm not going to be mantraing it up like every day in front of my mirror or like while I'm in the car saying mantras to myself. But it's really, really crazy because once you do say things over and over to yourself, you start actually believing them. So in motherhood, there's some motherhood mantras, they're very simple, there's 10 of them, um, that when I'm not in the deep dark moments of feeling guilty, feeling pressures from social media or society and like feel like I'm failing and like my son and my husband would be better off with someone else and this and that and all these things, when I'm not in that moment and I'm in more of a level-headed common sense headspace, I say these mantras to myself because they're very important. And eventually those other voices get much smaller, like significantly smaller. So this little act that seems really, really simple and really kind of like mundane and like you don't really need to do over time ends up just being your second voice. You won't even need to say things out loud anymore. And in those moments of like dark despair or like you feeling shitty about yourself or feeling guilty um, or feeling pressure, that's when it'll start happening on its own. And it's really cool. Not all of my mantras come out, but some of them do now. And that's really, really, really interesting and like awesome. Anyway, we have five minutes left. Again, the struggles of motherhood, of parenthood is so much. And this is why I think it's so important to talk about it, to feel comfortable talking about it. Um, this has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. High school was a breeze, but it really wasn't. Um, studying in college, no problem. Uh, working the last 10 years, Monday to Friday, insane split hours and this and that and working with kids and working with kids with special needs easy peasy when that's 
it's not easy either. But motherhood tops everything so far. Between, you know, all of these struggles, making friends, um, housework, intimacy, lack of intimacy, mom guilt, the pressures, and then this whole other list that we didn't even get to and we will get to eventually, hopefully with very experienced professional people. Um, like, it's fucking hard. And I don't think it was meant to be easy. We are literally raising and shaping human beings, hoping that they are wonderful. Um, but it's a lot of responsibility and it's a big job and it's a very important job. Um, so I don't think this is supposed to be easy. But if we talk about it more, if we give ourselves a bit more of a break, if we are open and honest about the struggles so we can feel better about them, that we're not alone in facing these struggles, I think there will be much more room for happiness and just enjoying these years, enjoying, enjoying these times with our family and knowing that we're doing a fucking phenomenal job. So anyway, thanks for tuning in um, on all of the other struggles and stuff. Again, I'm working on trying to get those proper people in so we can have those awesome discussions. But as always, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate the people who were not able to make it live right now um, who will rewatch and, um, and talk to me about their experiences and what they feel. Again, I'm always open for conversation, so I am always available to be your online friend, um, your mom friend, and um, I'm pretty funny, I'm very kind, um, I'm a very nice, genuine person um, who's very honest, so if you need a little bit of that in your life, just reach out to me on the daily, it doesn't matter, I am always there, and just know that you're doing fantastic. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your Tuesday night and I will talk to you next Tuesday.